that nobody is missing any portion of the presentation. And if you can also wrap up your conversation, and I know we have kids in the room, they're excited, but I would truly appreciate a silence so that what we are covering in the presentation is understood by everybody. I would really appreciate your collaboration on this. Thank you so much. So like I said, it's uh, 2 or 3 p.m. and probably let's give it for another you know, couple minutes and then we'll go ahead and get started. The uh, agenda today is basically, I think we're gonna be in this room for about an hour and then you'll get to meet and greet the teachers. And uh, you'll be escorted, we have, you know, it was a last minute decision to kind of consolidate the presentations because of uh, some of our parents, uh, you know, having multiple kids in different, you know, grade levels. Uh, so we wanted to make it convenient for everybody. So uh, please take your time to meet with the teachers. I think this is a great opportunity. In September, I think I'm going to present the, the uh, upcoming events in September. We are going to have back to curriculum night. Uh, you'll, you'll get another opportunity to come back to the buildings and meet with the teachers and discuss the curriculum re related matters. Today is not the, the best opportunity to go into the detail of the curriculum and learning standards whatsoever. This is just a meet and greet ses sec uh, session. And uh, if you have any questions about the beginning of the school year, the school supply whatsoever, I mean, this is a good opportunity for those kind of conversations. But again, curriculum questions and conversation can wait a little bit, couple more weeks. It's on our school calendar and I'll present it here as well. And uh, I think, I think, uh, you know, you always have opportunities to reach out to the parents in case of any kind of inquiry. At the end of the presentation, if you have any questions that you think is pertaining to everybody, right? Then feel free to ask, I'll be able to take few questions. In a lot of cases, if you have any, any questions, any specific matter that you'd like to discuss, and please come forward and discuss with me because sometimes, you know, we, you know, the, that conversation would require some confidentiality, and I do not want to, uh, I'd like to be able to protect and maintain the confidentiality of your kids. So if it's a private matter, come discuss it with us, we'll stick around. And if it's a gen general matter, and uh, I'll take few questions, and then you'll be escorted to uh, the classroom areas. Basically, if you're an elementary student and, and parent, we have two hallways for elementary. It's 600. As soon as you exit from this room, it's straight across from the hallway. And, and 100. Middle, and, uh, middle school is 200 and 300. High school is 400 hallways. Like I said, you are going to be escorted and uh, you know, to kind of, you know, we'll, you'll be directed to the, to the proper areas to meet with the teachers. And before I begin, I'd like to uh, introduce some people. Mr. Eric Van Bladel is one of our board members and uh, we have administrators. Uh, we have Dr. Tasha Moscone, Ms. Nima Amin, and uh, Ms. Kerry Thomas, Ms. Susan Dinchers, and uh, Ms. Thomas, Dr. Moscone, and Ms. Dincher are curriculum directors. They are in charge of the curriculum and instruction. They support our teachers and students, and Ms. Nima Emin is in charge of the school operations here. We also have our best and the greatest team of teachers, and please give them rounds of applause. They sit on my lap. And uh, they also sit against the wall at the back and they're gonna be in the classrooms when the presentation over. Please make sure to visit them in their classroom and have conversation. They, they'd love to do that with you. So without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and get started. And uh, I still see parents coming in. Uh, I believe we're out of chairs and the bleachers are open. And uh, 
it's a big group, but uh, the room is limited. I, I wish we could have more chairs, but maybe future will consider it. The agenda today is uh, the orientation schedule, upcoming events and activities, arrival procedures, safety policies and procedures, financial assistance and miscellaneous policies. I try to keep it very short, but the, any information that we provide here is so critical and crucial. I would truly appreciate your uh, close attention. And you do not have to take a picture of the slides or take notes. I uh, we're going to post this on the Genesis account. So you'll be able to download and review it. And in addition to this, or a lot of policies I'll be discussing here is a summary of the student handbook. We are yet to finalize our student handbook because, and I'll discuss it with you shortly, we are going back to normalcy, to pre-pandemic area in a lot of policies with some modifications. We are yet to finalize those modifications and, and you know, in the absence of certain guidance from the Department of Education and Department of Health. Therefore, just bear with us a little bit, maybe a week or two, we'll be finalizing the student handbook and we're gonna be posting it on our website, on the Genesis account whatsoever, you'll have it under your fingertip. But the important information, whether you know the dismissal procedures, arrival and other classroom related policies, you'll be communicated those policies even before posting the student handbook on Genesis or, uh, or the school website. So this is just a summary, this is not the whole thing, but you know, these are important, the most critical pieces of information that we think you should be aware of. Are we ready? I guess. Oh, we have some, great reminder, we have some available seats, and if you can raise your hand, if you have, you know, empty seats next to you, we can have some parents on this end. Please come and take the seats available. There are two here, another two here, and I see some available seats. It would be great to sit next to, you know, keep the family members together, but I guess that would be a compromise. And we have some, oh, um, there are some VIP chairs available. Any VIP parents up front, going once, twice, right here. Please come forward. There are a lot of chairs available here. There are actually about a dozen, 20. Yeah. There are chairs available. And they, this is what happens with the students too. Everyone sits at the back. We kind of forced them to, to move forward and that's what's happening. I guess it's genetic. So everyone please come forward. There are, there, are, there, are many desk, uh, there are many chairs available here. All the way, please. All the way. Ms. Tincher, send them all the way up here. There are many chairs available. I'll resume. Here is the theme moving forward. The, the return to normalcy. 
You know, COVID hit back in March 2020. It was the, the first official declaration of COVID and the last day of instruction before COVID declaration was March 11 at our school. So we had policies and practice in place that they were effective. And uh, the CDC recently updated the guideline. You know, the, per the guideline, there's not a lot of regulations. There's some recommendations, and I'll go over those recommendations with you shortly. So basically, the direction is the return to normalcy. That's what they put on their website. So that's what we're going to do in pretty much anything and everything. This is an overarching idea in pretty much any and every area. Hopefully, our practices will reflect the normalcy, pre-pandemic area, with some additional safety precautions in place. We're not doing away from anything and everything that we've had. We're keeping some of the practices, but you'll see a lot of you know, uh, relaxing of the, the restrictions. But again, there are some safety policies that will be in place to ensure the safety of our community, including our students and, and teachers. So as far as upcoming events are concerned, the first day of the school is Tuesday, September 6. The Chromebook distribution is ongoing at this moment. It's important if you haven't received the Chromebook for your kids, please do it. We are distributing the Chromebooks already as opposed to the first week of the school year that you know, like we were doing in the previous years. And uh, because the teachers will start assigning work, to, you know, starting the first week of the school year, make sure to have, to receive Chromebooks from the school by the first day of the, uh, by the first day of the school year. I'll take the questions at the end of it. But we'll discuss. And, uh, And if you have a Chromebook at home that you received from the school, and please return it as soon as possible, you might have heard from our IT department, and uh, so that we can give you a better and more functional one. Again, the purpose is to be able to provide the, the technology that's needed to complete the work in the classroom and, and at home. So uniform sale is going on. It started today. We kind of paused at 1 o'clock for the purpose of this presentation, and it's going to continue after this presentation until 7 p.m. And, uh, and it, it will happen tomorrow as well. We understand that they are already, you know, they ran out of some pieces and all that. In the first couple of weeks, we're going to be flexible with our students. And please make sure to place order online or reach out to them to ensure proper uniform pieces. PTSO welcome back event is September 10 from 2 p.m. To, to 5 p.m. September 10 is uh, not this Saturday, Saturday after. So our PTSO board, I think I, they are here. I am going to introduce them at the end of the presentation. And uh, they work, they put a lot of time and effort to nurture our kids beyond the classroom environment. Please join the PTSO and, and work as a group, as a team, to help nurture our students in our school environment. And back to school nights is the curriculum night that will take place on September 20th for Midland High School and September 22nd for elementary grades. You'll get further notification on that. And in the past, we were doing it hybrid. We're not doing it hybrid this time. It's going to be in person. Back to school night, you'll be invited, and, uh, and you'll get an opportunity, in-person experience, to meet with our teachers. Parent-teacher conferences is October 14. It's an individual conference and conversation with the teaching staff regarding your child's specific situation, whether it's academic, social, or behavioral. So it's October 14. We may be able to grant online participation for those conferences, being mindful of your work responsibilities and schedule. Be on the lookout for, for, for an email regarding these events. 
safety. So under the overarching idea of going back to normalcy, like I said, we will still maintain some of our policies and practices. We learned lessons from this pandemic. It was a hard lesson, but we learned some. And uh, basically the CDC's recommendations, if you go to the CDC's website and recommendations for school, they make some recommendations and we're going to keep them in place. And the recommendations would include staying up to date on vaccinations. It's important and critical. And now even the little babies qualify for vaccination. And staying home when sick, CGCP's exclusion policy will, will, will apply, and I'll discuss the exclusion policy. Hand hygiene and respiratory etiquette, and cleaning of high touch services. And uh, I would ask you to work with us as a team and please enforce and reinforce these practices at home. You know, teach your kids how to properly wash the hands and we're going to practice it here as well, 20 seconds with soap type of things. It's important, those kind of things, frequent hygiene, hand hygiene prevents a lot of, a lot of um, spreading because students touch the desk and then they touch their mouth, eyes, whatsoever, that's how they get the virus and the infection. That's a critical practice. Face covering remains optional for all students, staff, visitors, whatsoever. There is no judgment either way, whether you put it on or don't put it on. It's completely up to you, however you feel comfortable. And no judgment, and in case of any kind of bullying behaviors, regarding face masking or, or, you know, humiliating comments whatsoever will take action on it. Our school's HIV, harassment, intimidation, and bullying policy is effective and in place and will take action on it. So your child should feel safe and comfortable with any choice that he or she is making. Safety practices. We're going to clean and disinfect high-touch surfaces on a daily basis, like lunch tables, door handles, the kind of surfaces, so that our students do not get uh, contract, do, do not contract virus from any kind of high-touch surfaces. Teaching and reinforcing hand washing with soap for at least 20 seconds. Hand sanitizing stations will be available all, all around the building. No meal sharing. I know sharing is caring. But you know, you know, during this kind of critical period of time, I think we have to compromise that caring a little bit. Please make sure to get to provide food for your kids, or they can purchase food from the cafeteria. If your child qualifies for free reduced lunch services, it's at no cost or at a minimal cost. I'll discuss the free reduced lunch application shortly. Students who show symptoms will be isolated from the class, and we really need your collaboration on this. Do a visual check on your child every morning. If your child is having a runny nose or watery eyes, whatsoever, keep your child at home for the sake of him or her and others in the school. Because, like, one child can spread out the germ and the virus to many. Even if we get 95% of compliance from our parents and students, that 5% can technically cause of a breakout. So we need 100% of collaboration and participation from everybody to the greatest extent possible regarding this matter. So these are the typical COVID symptoms. And if your child is showing symptoms, please uh, keep your child at home. These are the COVID symptoms. As soon as your child shows symptoms, give them a test, COVID test, over the counter. That's important. If they test positive, there is a certain procedure, and I'll discuss. If they don't test positive for COVID, COVID keep them at home until they are symptom-free for at least 24 hours. That's how we ensure the safety of everybody. So if, if any person either 
the teacher or a student test positive, the quarantining period is five days. CDC says after five days, even, the, even if the child tests positive, it's not contagious anymore. We go by what the science says. And uh, you know, the child will stay home for about five days. And after returning to school, the child will be required to have a face mask on for another five days. Communication. This is a change, and in the past, you know, when there is there was a positive case in a classroom, then we would have notified the notified the parents of every child in that classroom. We're doing away from that policy, and uh, when we if we have a, a, a if we have a reason to strongly believe that you should be notified of any kind of health matters impacting your child. We, are, we will definitely communicate with you. But for any kind of positive case, random positive case, you're not going to be notified. And please do not expect an email in that area. For the purpose of transparency, we are going to keep the dashboard on our website. You'll be able to view how many students and parents are quarantining because of testing positive for COVID at the school. And when we have a trend of outbreak. We'll definitely work with the Department of Health. We'll give them detailed information as to how many students and staff members tested positive for COVID and the areas that they were together whatsoever. And the decision will be made by the Department of Health for the school community. It's, it's not going to be our decision. So we are very experienced in managing health crisis. Even during the first year of COVID, we kept our school open for in-person education. Around 45% of students attended the school on a daily basis for in-person instruction. And we handled it really well as a team, including the parents, students, and staff. And there was no outbreak, almost no outbreak. And, and we handled it well. So, uh, you know, with an ongoing collaboration and teamwork, I do believe that our students and staff will stay safe coming to school on a daily basis. So regarding the COVID-related attendance policy, again, I need you to pay close attention to this. This is important. This is a change. Quarantine days, an excu excused absence would include quarantine days because of a positive test. We require a doctor's note, though. Or we require an evidence, and we're going to notify you what evidences will be acceptable. The Google image is not going to be acceptable, the, the image of the positive test results. And uh, so we'll, we'll need a credible evidence. And we'll, we're, going, we're in the process of putting together a list of credible evidences that are acceptable to us. And then when you provide one of them, then your child will be considered excuse absence. Going back to pre-pandemic policies, what happens when a child is excuse absent? The child will be allowed opportunities to make up the work that the child missed during quarantining. So there is no penalty, there is no consequences. The child will be considered excuse absent and will be allowed to make up the work. Quarantine days because of symptoms. Let's say your child is showing symptoms, you give them a test, the child tested negative, but you want to keep the child at home. That's what we encourage you to do until the, the child is symptom free. And then in, in that case, please bring your child to the doctor and then get a note from the doctor so that we consider the child as excused. And if your child has a vaccination appointment, that day and time is also considered excuse absent. So all you have to do is to give us a copy of the, or a screenshot from your cell phone regarding showing your student's name and the appointment time whatsoever, and, and we'll excuse the child. In the past, when we quarantined kids, you'd remember that we posted additional work on the Google Classroom. We're not going to have, we're, going, we're not gonna do it anymore because again, as part of going back to normalcy, when students return to school, they'll be allowed to 
make up the work that they missed because of quarantining. So there is no actual need to post additional work on a daily basis on Google Classroom if your child, for your child that's absent from the school. You work with the teachers and you as a parent have responsibilities. You reach out to the teachers and notify the teachers that you were quarantining your child, whether it was because of symptoms or because of positive test results. And then teacher will work with you as to providing the makeup work, the timeline and all that. And close communication and effective communication is key to support our students and allow them or help them complete the missing work. Transportation. The transportation is totally under the control and management of the school districts. We have no control over the transportation. It's sad. And uh, so when there is a problem, and there will be a problem, it happens every year. Sometimes the buses don't show up, or they're late, or they follow inaccurate route. These kind of things happen. And when that happens, the best people to reach out to would be the district transportation department. We're going to share their contact information with you in an email. And when there is an issue, please reach out to them and have your voice heard by them so that they fix it. And uh, what happens is we get a lot of calls and emails. Parents are understandably upset. And I would have been upset if my child was negatively impacted by transportation matter. You're rightfully upset, but there is almost nothing we can do about it. We call the transportation department on your behalf. That's all we can do. And we have no jurisdiction over the transportation department. That's unfortunate, but that's the truth and reality. So we'll share that information with you and please reach out to them. Policies and practices are different by district. Again, it's their own transportation department. We serve uh, in our region of residence. We have three districts, New Brunswick, North Brunswick, and Franklin, and the, the department to transportation policies are, are not identical. Fire drills, you'll be notified when we have fire drills. It's, it's part of the state law that has been recently enacted and signed into the law. So uh, you'll get a text message or email that we had a successful drill type of thing. It's new. It's required by the state. Assistance is available. We have a federal grant from the U.S. Department of Education. By the way, we still have, I'll take, I'll pause a little bit. We have a lot of chairs here. Please come forward and have a seat. Parents, we have chairs available here. I can count about 15 here at least. Chairs are available. I don't see a lot of moment. It's okay. All right. Let's move on. We've received, uh, we've received money from the Federal uh, Department of Education. And uh, with that grant money, we are able to provide a lot of financial assistance to students coming from low-income families. Basically, if a child is qualified for free reduced lunch services, we're providing a set of uniform, all these pieces listed here. We're providing school supplies and we're pro providing all these services at no cost to the student. And, and the most recent addition is our college mentorship program. There is a fee for it, about $700 a year for 34 weeks. We even waive that fee for students who qualify for free distance services. So if you believe that you qualify, I would strongly encourage you to apply. I believe we have some printed copies of the applications. And please take a moment and fill out the form. And the Department of Agri Agriculture manages it, by the way. They, they changed the threshold a little bit. And if you didn't qualify in the past, you might be qualifying now. So try again. It would never hurt. I'll give you an example. Family of four making less than 53338 could qualify. That threshold was $49,000 before. 
So they, they increased the threshold so that more students would qualify. And there is a great benefit of it. I would strongly encourage. It's a use it or lose it type of money. If we don't use that money for our community and students, we'll return it. We have to take good stewardship of, of the tax dollars. Meals. Meals will be available for all students throughout the school year. And we provide lunch, I mean breakfast, between 7.30 and 7.50. 7.50 is when the first period starts. And the payments will be made through Genesis if your child does not qualify for free distance services. And, uh, and your students will, uh, will use their ID badge for purchases in the cafeteria. And sharing food is not caring this year. So be mindful of it. School day. The first period starts at 7.50. The buses are hopefully here by then. And the last period, or we dismiss the school at 3 to 21. And the, the buses will run after 3 to 21. Typically, based on the typical trend, the last bus leaves around 3.50 or 4 o'clock-ish. But, uh, you know, this is for the first two weeks, and then once everyone is used to it, once students know where their bus is, once they get used to the bus and the bus driver, it's a tester process. So then, then we'd be able to um, let, the, let the buses depart from the campus as early as 3.40-ish. And uh, on the first, during the first few weeks, you'll get a notification from us on a daily basis. And I know it's annoying. You get phone calls and text messages stating that the last bus left the school at 3, 4 to 3 p.m. This is just to let you know of the status of the, the school buses. All right, as an, as an innovative approach in our school, uh, students in fourth grade and up are taught by subject teachers as opposed to general uh, classroom teachers. Remote learning is not allowed. It's strictly forbidden by the state law. And I understand the safety is a concern for some of our parents. Just so you know, it's beyond our control. We're not allowed to provide 100% of remote instruction for anybody. Chain of communication, this is another critical information. And when, there, when, you have an, when, when you have an inquiry or question about anything and everything that's happening in the classroom, who is the first person to reach out to? The teacher, right? And the, the administrators are not the first person because they are not, they do not know what's happening in the classroom at any given time on a daily basis. It's the teacher. So if you have any questions regarding any kind of grade, discipline matters, whatsoever, you know, that happen in the classroom, please reach out to the teacher first. If the teacher does not address your concern, then please reach out to our directors. We'll share their contact information with you. For elementary, it's Ms. Susan Dincher. Susan, right here, great. And she's our expert. She's been working at our school she was in instrumental in starting the elementary school at CJCP. She is your contact person if the matter is not resolved with the teacher. For middle school, it's Ms. Thomas. And for high school, it's Dr. Moscone. Is she around? She's with a parent. OK. She always takes care of people. So if the matter is not resolved to your satisfaction by the directors, then the next person is me. Hopefully, I'll take care of you well. But usually, our directors take care of you better than I do. And uh, so I know by experience, 99.9% .9 of the matters are resolved by either teachers or, or directors. But if I have to be involved, I, won't, I wouldn't mind being involved. I'll help you with your, with your inquiries. If the matter is not resolved to your satisfaction by me, then you may reach out to our board of trustees, and, and their information will also be provided to you. Emergency school closing, please be on the lookout when there is an inclement weather. 
uh, forecasted implement, inclement weather or anything like that. You'll get emails, phone calls, text messages. We put it on, put it on our school, uh, school website, also NJ12 News. And there's a list of schools and school districts that would be closed. So we're going to be mobilizing and utilizing all kind of venues to, to keep you in the loop and notify you. Student handbook. Like I said, not everything is final in the student handbook, but these are key information. There is a new policy here, and I kindly request your close attention to this matter. Headphones. Headphones, wireless headphones are strictly forbidden in the building. What happens is students put their headphones and they turn on the noise cancellation, they don't hear anybody. And teachers are talking to them, they don't hear the teacher. I talk to them, they ignore me. I feel like I'm ignored, but they don't hear me because they have noise cancellation. So headphones, wireless headphones are strictly forbidden. As soon as the kids walk into the building, they have to take them off. And for the purpose of instruction, there are cases where we use the headphones for instruction. If they have to watch a video or something like that, we will provide them wired headphones in the classrooms. I understand some students and, and parents do not feel comfortable with wired headphones. Then if that's the case, please buy one of those cheap wired headphones for your kids. They are just a few dollars and they're available at the dollar store too. So no wireless headphones available of any kind, any brand. They have to be wired. This is new. Cell phones are strictly prohibited during the instructional time. If the cell phone rings or used, then it will be confiscated and not given back to the student. It will be returned to you then you'll, you'll have to come to the school, leave it from the school in case of any kind of confiscation. I'll take the questions later on. So backpacks are not permitted in the classrooms for safety reasons. That's another matter. I, I request your close attention to this. Sometimes we buy those fancy and expensive backpacks that are large that, that, would, that wouldn't fit in the, the lockers and then students try to bring them to the classroom, but it's not allowed. Then they leave it by the door, not allowed, because they may get this misplaced type of things. Therefore, I request and ask you to purchase book bags and backpacks in the right size, in a way that they fit into the locker, regardless of the brand, by the way. And it's another issue. If I had more time, I would have discussed it with you. Again, going back to the normalcy, these policies would reflect the, the, the policies or identical to the policies, you know, pre-pandemic. And uh, if your child is, ab is absent, excuse absent, please work with the child to work with the teacher to, uh, to, uh, request to make up work type of things. When we release our student handbook, by the way, there is not going to be a lot of changes in the violation cycles, minor violation cycles and major violation cycles. The one from last year is still on the website. We keep it on the website for, you know, one purpose. Just review what would constitute a minor violation or major violations and the consequences. In our schools, we implement restorative justices program Instead of penalizing the child, instead of taking punitive approach to the child, we try to help them develop the right habit and the skill set. That's what we do, so we need, we need you to work with us on that matter and collaborate and cooperate with us. And, but when the, when the violations are repetitive, when there is a trend, when the child is resistant to work with us, then to maintain the orderly environment, we have to take action about it. And that's what we're doing. Attendance policy, generic attendance policies, these are the matters that we just listed because we deal with these kind of matters pretty frequently and please pay close attention. Examples of excused absences, medical needs, require a doctor note, death in the family, hopefully it doesn't happen, 
up to three college visit days for only 11, 10, 12 graders. What's not excused? And in fact, there are consequences for a certain number of unexcused absences. Family travel need or family travel want during the semester. If your cousin is getting married in another country, that does not create alleged ground to, for your child to be absent from the school. And in fact, as I discussed with many of you before, the court system is heavily involved in New Jersey. When student is chronically absent, more than 10% of the instructional time, actually 10 days of, of absence, we have to refer the case to the court. It's the state law, and we will. Then you deal with the judge, not us. So please be mindful, if there is an extenuating circumstance of any kind, I strongly encourage you to discuss with us and consult with us to kind of find out how to mitigate the potential consequences. But again, marriage or those kind of, you know, leisure stuff during the school year, or I bought a ticket in the Disneyland in Florida two years ago on a discount, now I have to go, I have to bring my child, he's having a birthday party in Disneyland. This kind of stuff are not good ground for students to be absent from the school. So please be mindful of these kind of issues. And by the way, these are real examples. I just didn't make it up. And real examples. And, uh, and again, if there is an extenuating circumstance beyond your, your control, Discuss it with us and we'll, we'll see what we can do about it. There are some flexibilities and, and restrictive policies from the state. 10 consecutive unexcused absences will result in automatic disenrollment from the school. It's the state law. When you are, if you are traveling, if the child is unexcused after 10 consecutive absence, we have to, how you doing? We have to disenroll the child. Uniform policies, you know, polo shirts and sweaters, solid color long sleeve shirts can only be worn under polo shirts. School fillets jackets, I understand in the winter it's cold and instead of random jacket, please buy one of these fleece jackets. And they are $34.99, I know it's expensive, but again, if you are in need of financial assistance, please fill out the free reduced lunch application form. If you qualify, we provide all of these to you at no cost. We also have some PE uniforms. Personal appearance is important. I'm not gonna go over each and every one of them one by one. This, all these policies are in place to create an orderly environment for our kids. Free from peer pressure and uh, so that our students feel equitable and equal with, equal with everybody else. And, uh, and again, nothing should be distracting our students' learning. Morning arrival, students, uh, elementary students riding buses enter through the gym. They go to the cafeteria if they wanna eat breakfast or they go to the first period class. And middle and high school students are pretty much the same thing. If you are providing the transportation for your child, you're going to pull into the parking lot. There's a certain way of traffic in it. And, and I'll show it to you. And I would appreciate if you, if you follow it. Here is the issue. Let's take two seconds to kind of get the attention. I'm releasing, we're releasing our teachers, by the way so that they are in the class and I'm very close to the end of the presentation. Let me see if the, uh, oh, this thing is not working, it's okay. I'll take two minute pause. Oh. Perfect. Ms. Emin is telling me that there are signs in the hallways showing the teacher's name. And if you're looking for, or if you're heading out to specific rooms to meet with certain teachers, please follow the signs. Parents are staying, teachers are leaving the room. 
This is an important matter. You can't hear. Where is the IT? Please get the IT. And by the way, I was just told as a reminder that if you have to purchase a uniform, you have to drive around the building. And uh, all right, I think we're all set. I believe last two or three slides, but last, you know, this is important. In the morning, we deal with a lot of traffic problems. We need to be on the same page on this. Yes, yes. Is there other people? Okay. Good reminder. Huh? No, no, I'm okay. It's working. It's working. Thank you. All right. Attention, please. Three, two, one. Okay, we're going. This is the morning traffic. Green is how you enter the parking lot. All these green arrows and how you proceed to the front. And, and since I have only one laser light, I hope you can see it. This is, can everyone see the, the laser light? This is where you enter and you go all the way. You don't go right here, by the way. And all the traffics are one way. If you see a car, coming from the other side on the same road, either you are wrong or the other side is wrong. And if you see multiple cars coming from the other side, guess who is wrong? <laughs> it happens a lot, by the way. And, and, and I would truly appreciate if we can just follow this, pull into the parking lot and turn left and keep, all, you know, keep going all the way to the end and, and use one of these aisles to drop off the kids. You will see the security, the most of the violation, here is where it happens, it's right here. It's right here because I see some, some cars coming from this side, coming back. And then it clogs the traffic right at this inter intersection right here. And you will have this map on your email, on Genesis and everywhere. And, and please keep it under your fingertips to make sure. And after a few days, you'll get used to it. You'll, you'll have people directing you. Just follow the direction. And once you get used to it, just, just follow through throughout the school year. The bus, bus route is different. Buses will come and they'll you know, drive all the way around and they'll drop off the kids right here, bus drop off. And this is the gymnasium that we are in now and they'll go to the cafeteria if they eat breakfast, and, or they'll go to the, the classrooms. So that's the traffic, and I would truly appreciate 100% of compliance on this matter. And this is the morning drop-off in the morning, right at the, uh, the buses. All right, dismissal. The dismissal time is 3.21. Middle and high school kids will be dismissed through the front desk. You'll pick up your front entrance. You'll pick up your child from the front entrance. If they're riding bus, they're going to ride the bus on the back side of the building. And they'll know where to go. Our staff is going to direct them if they're new to the school. There shouldn't be any reason to stress out. Again, this is where everybody is going. Yes. Sure. Hold on, hold on. For dismissal elementary families, when you go to visit your classroom today, please confirm with your child's teacher how they are getting home. Your child on the first day of school is going to get a dismissal badge, which is going to be attached to their backpack. Please keep this on their backpack so that we know where they should be going at the end of the day each day. If you're going to do a temporary change, let's say your child is always bus, but you want to pick them up today, if you can make sure in Genesis you need to fill out 
the modified daily pickup release. This is a button that you press in your child's Genesis account to change their dismissal just for that day. You need to identify when you do change it, who you are approving to pick up your child first and last name. Uh, and this needs to be done by 12 p.m. So then the teacher has enough time to make those changes throughout the day. Please do not email or dojo your classroom teacher because if your child's teacher is absent that day, they're never going to get that change and your child's going to go their regular dismissal. That's why it's important to fill it out in Genesis because all staff get that report. So if there's a sub in there, that sub will get that report and be able to make that change. Okay? This is much better. And last but not least, I'd like to int introduce Ms. Makeda Friesen. Ms. Makeda Friesen is our PTSO president. Please welcome her. Hi, everybody. I'm going to keep this brief because I'm sure you guys want to get going. But I just wanted to introduce myself as the PTSO president for the 2022-24 academic year. Um, and just for the Somerset campus, um, I wanted to just talk about our initiative and just some of our expectations that we have of the parents. Um, my board consists of my vice president, Sherry Fennell, my treasurer, Amy Araswala, um, the recording secretary, Jennifer Yamut Mwango, and then we have several uh, committee chairs, um, such as Anita Lella, uh, Crystal Roche, um, uh, Tejal Shah, and um, Urania Gonzalez Ramirez. Um, these are all individuals that have really put in a lot of time this summer to make sure that we provide quality programming um, for all the students that we have here. Um, now, there's several ways that you guys can support us as the PTSO. Um, there are many options. You can provide your time, your ideas, your suggestions, attending the meetings. Um, you can also provide monetarily. We always accept that. Um, and then we would also just love to also just have you um, attend our events. Um, and then our expectations of you guys is just to help to support us, help to make sure that we provide um, a great academic experience as well as um, opportunities for these children to come together and get to know each other. Um, because it's unique here, it is K through 12, and that's just not always you're gonna, not always going to find that. So they're going to be with each other this whole entire time, and we want to make sure it's a pleasurable experience. Um, so I look forward to seeing all of you. We have a few events coming up. We have September 10th, which is for everyone. We have September 30th for our high school students, um, and October 7th for our middle school. And if you check our website, you'll see all of our um, events that we will be doing for the school year. Um, so if you have any questions, you'll find all our contact information there um, and where we can be reached. I will see all of you out front, and I look forward to seeing all you wonderful faces. Thank you, Ms. Friesen. All right, September 10 is the first event, and please make sure to attend. And, uh, you know, the research says that the more parental involvement there is, the higher achievement, student achievement uh, we produce. So, therefore, your involvement is important, and we need to make sure that we're supporting our students, not only academically, emotionally, and socially. So, and your participation is going to be a great help in accomplishing that objective. So I think with that, I am done presenting. Again, if you have general questions, please feel free to ask. I can take a few questions, and then we'll dismiss the room. Or if you'd like to head out to meet with the teacher, you're more than welcome. Questions? Hold on. They leave.